بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم گڈ مارننگ ایوری ون آئی ایم ڈیلائٹیڈ ٹو بی ہیئر ٹو ڈے ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ سبجیکٹ دیٹ ہیز پوٹینشیل ٹو ٹیک پاکستان اکانمی ٹو اے سگنیفیکنٹلی ہائر اکنامک ڈیولپمنٹ اینڈ برنگ ان پیرلڈ بینیفٹس ٹو چائنا ایز ویل ناٹ سنس دی مارشل پلان آفٹر ورلڈ وار ٹو دیر ہیز بین انیشیٹو ٹیکن بائی این انڈیویژل کنٹری to rejuvenate the global economy. As we all know, CPAC is part of China's One Belt, One Road initiative that envisages uh, connectivity between and within Asia and Europe and aims to address the infrastructure gap that kept this vast region below its potential. From Pakistan's perspective, CPAC is a collection of infrastructure projects that are underway across the country and are valued at around $60 billion. Initially, they were at 46. I think this level and this quality of foreign investment is impossible to shore up for any country of our size from our own public finances. I say this because this investment is in infrastructure as opposed to industry. It is in roads and railways, uh, ports, power plants, special economic zones. I think it's an integrated, it has been integrated in a master plan as opposed to being evolutionary in, in nature as has been the case in most countries. Now, under traditional economic models, In market-driven and democratically-led countries, these vital investments are made over an extended period of time by elected governments. They pave the way for private sector to come in and set up factories and industries based on competitive advantage. Benefits accrue, but the infrastructure is not always linked to maximize synergies and advantages. <clears throat> for a host of reasons we are well aware of, Pakistan has not been able to allocate sufficient resources for infra infrastructure development. This has not only limited economic growth, but has restricted the country to a producer of very basic products. Now, CPAC offers a way to leapfrog into a modern future. A number of CPAC projects are underway and should be fully commissioned within the next five years. This speed of execution is unprecedented in our part of the world and significantly shortens the time to economic revival and broad-based growth. Despite the delays, which quite frankly were expected given the consensus building and administrative support required to deal with the scale and impact of these projects, Pakistan will have a fully functional port with, uh, which, uh, with a deep draft and uh, geostrategic location, road and railway linkage between China and, you know, the southern, uh, you know, Gavada, uh, over 10,000 megawatts, as Dr. Saab has said, incremental electricity, world-class economic zones, and much more in foreseeable future. Alongside this basic infrastructure, CPAC will be setting up special economic zones in different parts of Pakistan. This is really where the heart of, of our, our opportunity lies. A lot has been said about premature deindustrialization in Pakistan in common with other developing countries. The implication of this are as follows. As per capita income expands beyond lower middle income levels, demand for manufactured goods grows even faster than GDP. In line with the expansion of the middle class in terms of autos, electric appliances, etc. If the manufacturing investment and output has not been growing faster than GDP in previous years, domestic production will not be able to meet the higher demand. High demand will then result in rising imports and balance of payment pressures. As a consequence, policy will need to be put in place to curb excess demand, which will then slow down or even reverse the rate of GDP growth. This has been true for Pakistan for at least a couple of decades now. 
we seem to be capped at a growth rate of 6% of GDP, beyond which our current account deficits begin unsustainable growth. In Pakistan, manufacturing as a percent of GDP has been static over time. 19.5% versus 20.5%, you know, a decade ago. And investment to GDP has fallen from 20% to 15%. We must use CPAC to reverse this trend. First, the proposed special economic zone must have a segment focused on producing intermediate goods, which at present have a rising share in our imports, autos and electronic parts and components, and different types of chemicals, etc. This will assist us to expand production of final consumer goods with decreasing reliance on imports. China has a large number of companies with whom we can form joint ventures to achieve rapid expansion in this area. Second, we need to set up intensive labor training arrangement with Chinese help at the special economic zones. Also, China's universities' assistance with research for companies in the special economic zones and often have campuses in special economic zones. We must involve academia in research for our business development strategies. Third, we must focus on upgrading our knowledge and skills with respect to industrial technology. In the developed world, as in China, the increase in use of new technology, i.e. robots, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, will bring down the cost of final goods. This will create pricing disadvantage for goods made in the traditional way. As we go forward, we must use China's expertise and, ex and experience in setting up our new manufacturing plants to take into account recent innovation in technology. Another opportunity which exists is an offshore Remimbi banking unit for Gavada. We should consider the possibility of allowing China to set up a RMB banking center at Gavada. This would be useful in different ways. First, it would provide the convenience of interoperability between rupee and RMB accounts for Chinese companies working in Pakistan and also Pakistan companies with China trade. Second, it would allow Chinese investors easy access to Pakistan investment accounts whether with the stock market or in the securities market. Third, to the extent that OBU also allows other trading partners of China in the region to transact through Gavadar, it would help build an international center for RMB there. Of course, state bank concerns will need to be kept in mind. From Pakistan's perspective, the conclusion is the industry in Pakistan has long complained about inadequate infrastructure being a major hurdle in achieving sustainable growth. Hopefully, with the completion of CPAC projects and the formation of these zones, many of those concerns will be alle alleviated. Pakistan will be able to truly experience private sector-led growth with the government focusing on policy making and regulation. However, CPAC has to be matched with consistency in policy. Only then we will be able to attract sustainable investment and benefit fully from the in initiatives underway. I think we'll need to create an advisory council on CPAC where all stakeholders are uh, uh, represented and predominantly, I think, people who will be using these special economic zones. China stands to benefit CPAC in a number of ways. Trade routes have been central to generating wealth since time immemorial. The rise of Western Europe was preceded by opening of trade routes with the Arab world, which introduced them to advancement in things as far reaching as science, mathematics, weaponry, architecture, food and medicine. Portugal became a global empire in the 16th century following the discovery of route to India around the Cape of Good Hope. In the 19th century, the opening of Suez Canal was a revolution that single-handedly reduced travel distance by 7,000 kilometers by the Mediterranean and Red Seas, resulting in major prosperity to Western Europe. For China, 
CPAC will create a secure trading route that will serve as an alternative and willing, uh, will link much of the world with its Western world. Present, presently, approximately 80 percent of China's oil is transported via the Straits of Malacca to Shanghai, a distance of 16,000 kilometers and a time period ranging of two to three months. With Gawadar operational, this distance will be reduced to 5,000 kilometers. China will be able to move manufacturing capacity to Pakistan and benefit from its lower cost advantage, you know, through some tax concessions and other, you know, the lower labor cost. Companies in these economic zones will have the necessary connectivity and will sustain uh, yeah, in conclusion, I think CPAC can be a win-win for both China and Pakistan. Key lies in collaboration with and execution. We are off to a good start. Let's put all our efforts in concluding this project in a timely manner in order to generate maximum benefit. Thank you very much.